Welcome back, guys. Uh, we have another car that we just finished uh, that was commissioned by uh, our very first domestic client uh, a little while ago. Uh, we just finished it. It started off as uh, one project, turned into another project, and then turned into a whole other project after that. Um, and we're finally done with it. It's uh, my personal favorite so far. Uh, it's the fastest one we've done yet by, by a lot. And uh, basically, uh, this guy wanted a car to, that you can take on the track. So he wanted a six-speed manual. So, and at the time, the only options for that were to buy a SLK 350, which comes with a six-speed manual. So we, we did that. We found the 38,000-mile car, uh, the you know, lowest mileage car in the country. Per usual, we brought the car in and turned it into uh, one of our Gullwing Speedsters. Halfway through the process, the customer decided he... He definitely wanted the stick shift, but he definitely wanted to go faster. He wanted to tick one, one of the boxes that were available on the options list. Uh, so he decided to go for basically the, the whole shebang. Uh, we put an E55 motor. We actually, actually, actually had to sacrifice an E55 uh, 2006, a very nice you know, E55, to uh, turn this car into an E55. So we basically took everything out of an E55, put it in here motor-wise, we sent the car up to a, a, a very, very talented uh, Mercedes tech called Accelerated Industries in, uh, in Illinois. He had the car for a while. He put the 55 motor in it. Um, now, we've done SLK 55s before, but this one is the supercharged version from the E55. So it's just a much different uh, power plant. And the challenge was he still wanted a six-speed manual. And you know, generally, an AMG doesn't come with a six-speed manual. So uh the gentleman from up north uh, Ex accelerated industries uh, suggested to use uh, a nissan transmission which was a surprise to me but we have a 370z six-speed manual in it with an adapter plate and it works flawlessly it's a whole different car basically an e55 with a stick shift if you can imagine that in a, a small car like an slk so um so we did that it took you know much longer to do it because we were halfway through the process uh, the car comes back, it's, it's a monster. It's just the fastest thing we could ever imagine it, it could be. And then some. Um, he wanted the side pipes, so if, it's a, a 55 compressor with side pipes. You know, that's the exhaust. So it, it's loud as can possibly be. It sounds incredible. Um, basically, if I were to build one for myself, this, this would be the, the direction I would go. So once we finished that, then the client decided that, you know, he's in Tampa, so it rains. He wants, he wants a roof. So right when we were about done with it, he decided he wanted to add a roof to it, but not just any roof. Uh, the craziest roof, you know, one can ever think about making. Um, and that's what we ended up doing. So we just got done with the roof, and now we're finally ready to present you guys the car. All right, so this is our first uh, E55 motor in one of these cars, coupled with a six-speed manual. Uh, it just fits. It barely fits, but it fits, and it fits well. Uh, we did a cooling package uh, and a few other packages, and this thing is just a rocket ship. It's the fastest SLK I've ever been near, and it looks like a Gullwing, and it's... It sounds like it looks. It's just the most incredible drive ever. Like I said, if I were to uh, spec one out for myself, it would basically go in this direction. Uh, E55 motor is my favorite motor. It's just reliable, it's fast as hell, and easily tunable. So this car is probably close to 600 horsepower, 600 torque, and again, a six-speed manual from Nismo. Um, and it works amazing. So congratulations to the new owner. Um, I hope you enjoy this car as much as we've enjoyed building it, and I'm, I'm sure you will. Um, Pyron, I want to show some of the interior also. The interior job, once again, California upholstery, big sound system, their usual lighting. Uh, of course, the trunk stuff. Um, Just a very clean, clean interior. You know, it looks like uh, it could look cool 50 years from now. There's no screen, no nothing. Has a vintage uh, style stereo system in the dashboard. 
and uh, had just very, very clean. This is exactly what the client wanted, and that's what he got. Um, yeah, there's the stick shift. I mean, we've never seen one of those in one of our gullwing builds yet, so it's cool. It's refreshing to see a, a manual. This guy was adamant about the manual, and I'm glad he was. And it came out just, just amazing. Uh, we added the LEDs in the trunk and a few special features. This one has the optional uh, automatic trunk and uh, just a very clean setup. It's actually got a humidor in here. Uh, the guy likes smoking cigars, so uh, just again a very clean job. Uh, uh, if I were to uh, explain this car in two words, this is just a, this, is a, this one's a wild animal. It's fast. It's crazy. It's uh, too much for most, and and not enough for some, but uh, more than enough for me. So this build was in de many different stages. This just being one of those many. Uh, we worked on this car probably longer than any other car just because it was so different and had so many different features and so many different things we haven't done before. This was probably, this was probably six months ago. You know, the car was already, like I said, it was almost ready and, uh, you know, we got add-ons and add-ons, which, which are fine. It just it ended up taking much, much longer. So this was probably right around SEMA time. It's actually right before SEMA. We're putting the whole car back together after fixing a few little things. Just, you know, putting on, that's a uh, uh, handy dandy laser to get everything straight. That's Joey there and Art Joe. Putting the car back together basically. And this is probably right around October. We're getting ready to deliver this car to the client and just buttoning everything up. And then surprise, I want a, I want a different roof than the one I already have. So the one you guys just saw is the one we made originally. We made a roof for it already. Uh, but the client decided he wanted a way cooler and more unique roof. So this is a still us putting the car back together, you know, right before SEMA. Literally getting ready for delivery. And the last moment, uh, the client decided he wanted a different roof. <laughs> so this process that you're seeing now, we probably went through this process three different occasions on this car. And uh, you know, it was fun all three times, but I wish we did it all from the, from the very, very get go. Um, but in the end, it came out perfect. I mean, I, I think the timeline worked out just like it was supposed to. The client ha now has his car and, you know, he's, he's enjoying it. This is us putting the Needs Wings uh, modified intake manifolds on. Um, we always use those on all the compressor cars. Uh, Needs Wings out of Michigan makes those, makes those uh, manifolds and a lot of other things for, for AMG cars that we uh, often like to use. This is the, the side pipes. The side pipes on this car are crazy. They, they sound just right. They are loud, but it's a, it's a good kind of loud. It's not an annoying loud. And everyone seems to like the sound. This is Mo fitting the, uh, the diffuser on. Again, this is probably the second time we were doing this. Um, but again, it was all, all, all in fun. So fast forward to about a month later, he wanted to change the top. And he wanted the top to still have the gullwing doors that the car originally came with. This is Perry doing just that. Uh, I mean, you know, a lot of ingenuity, a lot of, a lot of brains to, to do something like this, to make it functional and make it actually roadworthy. So this process took uh, months, took many months. In fact, it took probably about four months to make this roof and make it functional and make it, you know, what the original idea was. So you guys can see there's now a cutout. That's the little door for the actual roof that we're gonna use that'll open like a gullwing. So this car will be able to open outwards the regular doors and then upwards with the gullwing doors that are attached to the removable roof. That's Perry just kind of in the process of making it. Again, it took months and months and months, a lot of opening and closing. This He probably did that 2,000 times before. You know, he was finally happy with the, uh, the way it came out. And what the way it came out is basically it molded to the car. It looks like it's part of the car. It looks like it's supposed to be there. 
and it's just a very, very crafty, very, very cool design. And uh, you know, this is a master at work. He's one of those people that enjoyed doing what he's doing, and that's why you get the product that, that you get in the end. We're here with the Beast. Uh, we call this car the Beast. It's uh, got a V8 compressor with a stick shift and an SLK. It's an animal. This car is just something else. Uh, we've always offered this as an option, but uh, only one client ticked that box, Mr. Brian. And he plans on racing this thing on the track and actually using it like a race car. So uh, we did just that. We made him a race car. Um, this is us bringing the car after the roof is done back to upholstery for the third time to get our third round of changes done, um, you know, based on the direction the car was going. And this is us kind of kind of there in front of the California upholstery spot. I'm Brian Lehner, uh, this is my fiance, Kim Clark, and we're here uh, driving the new whip we just got built for us by the man himself, Mr. Slang, and uh, yeah, driving it for the first time, and this thing is absolutely amazing. Just a beast of an engine, 5.5 V8, supercharged AMG, ready to go. Manual. Manual transmission, thing is a thing of beauty. This is Mitch, um, he's our expert detailer. He's, he's one of those people, like the rest of our staff, they just love doing what they, what they do, and it really shows in their work. Uh, this guy loves detailing cars. He's been working on cars since, since forever ago, and knows more about paint than, than most uh, auto body guys. Uh, he's just a perfectionist, he, he gets the job done. He coats the cars with ceramic, and in the end, the client gets a car that's coated, you know, protected for a long time, just always looks good, always shiny, and super easy to wash. So, uh, you know, he's one of those guys that are uh, perfectionists. So the corners and all the edges are his his main thing. He he gets them he gets them right, and the other cars look like they came off the showroom floor. So we're prepping the inside of these doors. I'm cheating with a stencil today. It'll make life easy. We'll clean it with a little prep ball. We made these at home on a, a computer plotter. We'll tape these bad boys up here and then adjust as needed. My name is, uh, oh yeah, sorry. 
My name is Dave Zatazalo. I'm a pinstriper, Orange County. I've been doing this for 25 years now-ish. All freehand pinstriping, motorcycles, cars, trains, planes, automobiles, everything pretty much under the sun. Um, it's been a, pool, a cool little gig I've been doing. <clears throat> and this is the fun stuff, working for John. John's very cool, he's very good to me. All right. So he said middle-ish, about right there, and then I'll start measuring. Okay, feet measure. Five and eight. That's gotta go to the right. Uh, I've been probably with John for seven or eight years now. And I, when he started, it was just kind of like, not small time, but I could tell he had ambition he was gonna go places. And sure enough, He's, he's the man now. Seems like he's outgrown this whole thing. He needs a bigger shop. It's always amazing when I come here, what I see versus like three or four months ago, I show up and there's something that just blows the last project out of the water. That's pretty cool to see. Yeah, so he says he's got something in store for next SEMA. I can't wait to see what it is. <laughs> Tutorial. Out of town. I'm in contact. I'm back. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you how tough with it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You gotta go right leg first. Right leg, straight dive right in. Right leg. Damn, we gotta go right, right leg barefoot. Right go right leg all the way. I don't think I need foot zone. Oh, those shoes gonna make it fucked up. Yeah, those shoes ain't gonna make it. Yeah, this is stick though. Yeah, eat them. That's about the maximum height. I can sit right here. Thing over six two like this. So they still need to get. Right here, so hard. Right here, so hard. Like, give me the car and then these are like a reveal later. You do one of it? I will. Right now, don't worry. Okay, so uh, this is this one's built on a, based on an SLK 32. We use a 32 if we want to do a stock looking gull wing with no wide body and you know, none of the normal additions because it's identical. It's an identical wheelbase. The 55s are a little bit longer, but the 32 is perfect. So we ended up using that for this car for that reason. Um, California Upholstery did the upholstery per usual, and they they just did an outstanding job. It looks as as nice as it could possibly look uh, for what the client wanted and the engine bay is all done up so if you want to show them the engine bay <clears throat> we don't usually leave anything stock so this is kind of what you can expect in one of our engine bays we always do the leather up here 
and you guys have probably seen that in the, uh, previous episodes, but nothing gets untouched. Everything gets, you know, wrapped in either leather or fiberglass and, you know, painted or polished or powder coated or all of the above. Uh, but we're very proud of this one. It looks amazing going down the street. It's, uh, it's about as classy as uh, going as we've done yet. And, uh, we're very happy for the client and we're happy to see him again. And, uh, and uh, you know, deliver him his car, and you know, get hopefully his wife's reaction, and, and so on and so forth. So, okay. So over the years, uh, me and Edison have used dozens and dozens of painters. We've been through so many painters. I don't even remember all of, all of their names. And uh, Paco here from PCC is by far the best painter we've ever had. Um, his work speaks for itself. He's also a very expensive painter. So if, if you want to get something done, you have to come with the big bag. Um, the last six or seven cars he's painted for us uh, came out really, really nice, all SEMA quality. Uh, this one's about to go to Miami, and the other one is about to go to Tampa. So I just want to introduce you guys to Paco. He'll kind of walk you around the car and explain what he did. And, yeah, he's, he's our best painter, so. Hey, how you doing, guys? This is uh, the painter from PCC, uh, the owner. Uh, I've been painting for... Uh, S Club for these guys, the best guys in the, uh, for these cars. Uh, and I like to work with them because they're really, really easy going. And the best thing for them is because they pay good. And besides that, uh, they make everything easy. So whatever I need, they give me everything. Make it easy for my work. And they pay, pay for the best paint job, pay, best paint material. And I don't have any problem to start working with them. And, I always do my best, and this is what I, what it turns. Uh, we block the cars. We make it be sure the car has to be good in every single corner. And uh, I'm glad. I'm really happy to to work with them. And I don't have a, I don't have words to to appreciate them and to be thankful for the opportunity to work with them. And I'm really happy we work with all this team and this company. Thank you, guys. So this is the Triple G build. Uh, Triple G, amazing boxer, amazing guy, uh, you know, amazing person, uh, amazing client, you know, just amazing guy overall. Uh, gave us the honor to build him a car, and you know, his he had very very specific instructions. He wanted the car to look as original as you know the day it came off the '50s uh, showroom floor. He wanted it just just down precise to you know every last every last detail. But he wanted the modern amenities, the, the you know the horsepower, the the new suspension, the brakes, the you know the newer car underneath. He just wanted to look original. So uh, you know I think I think we nailed it. I mean the car looks as original as a Goldwing can look. You know it's got the bumpers. One of the first times that we've used the actual bumpers. We usually don't use bumpers because the race cars back in the days didn't use bumpers. We thought it looks cooler, but with the bumpers it's a whole another. Uh, it's a whole nother car, you know, it's a lot more elegant, it's a lot more understated, but just still cool as hell. Um, so this car took us, you know, quite some time to put together just because, you know, John's a perfectionist and, you know, he wants everything just right. We were originally going to use the original steering wheel on this car, but they're just so darn big. They're, they're, they're huge, like a school bus steering wheel. So we went with the smaller one, uh, which was also period correct. They used them back, you know, back in the 50s. And they raced with them, Ferraris used them. It's not an uncommon steering wheel, so we, we used the Nardi steering wheel for this car. As you can see, the dash and the gauges are all original. So we really tried to you know, go with the theme, uh, at the same time put our little touches on it, like you can see here. Um, you can still tell it's a car built by us, but it just looks so, so darn original and it looks so darn good uh, going down the road. My name is Mitchell. I am a professional detailer and paint correction specialist located out of, out of uh, Los Angeles, California. I own a company called Technique Details. Uh, turned out to be just a passion for cars in the very beginning, early stages of my life. Uh, Hot Wheels, Matchbox cars. I was just obsessed with the model cars and then it turned out to go to car shows growing up and then eventually uh, at a young age started off working at body shops and wheel and tire shops and just my experience 
evolved over time just by working at all these shops and meeting faces. And I just fell, in, I've always been in love with detailing and never really took it too serious until in my early 20s. And I really, uh, I took my, my learning very, very serious. Uh, learning, my background in body shops really taught me a lot about paint, the science of paint. There's a huge team that's involved in the building this car. And I'm usually the last one, of course, but it's just so many, you're working, literally working on so many pieces of the car that have been done by so many people, and now you're the last one, so it's not like a, a manufactured car. You gotta make sure all of your edges are completely preserved. It, it's been color sanded and polished before when it was in the paint stages, but now the paint's cured, it's shrunk, uh, maybe some of the Bondo has shrunk, see a little bit of movement under the paint. You gotta, you gotta make sure you know all that in your head before you lay a polisher down on this. Preserving the edges is probably the most important part. Uh, I'd say I'm working on these custom uh, fiberglass cars, such as this, or an old AC Cobra kit car, Daytona, whatever. Uh, edges, super easy to burn. You know, it's, it's just take, take a good hour of your time, hour and a half, however long it takes you, and really focus on pipe, pipe lining the tape uh, around all the edges both of them. Your taping techniques are really, really, really important when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, so when you're machine cutting it, you don't have to really worry about rubbing off the edges and, and stuff like that because it's very easy. Remember, you're jumping into somebody else's work and it's, it, it could be very difficult and frustrating at times. And you gotta look out for blends. You gotta look out for, you know, shrinkage and a little bit of bondo here and there. It's all custom stuff. It's all, it's, uh, but you know, when you level out the clear coat, after it's got you know three or four months of proper curing, it's just phenomenal. It looks great, and it's for a fiberglass car. And this is just outstanding. The the paint is uh, on this car and the Ferrari and the 612 and John's dad's car. They're very consistent. The Tesla, very consistent. I like the paint. His painter is really good. Uh, I for the first two cars I was really taking my time on them. And then I got used to the painter's work and how thick the paint is, and it's really nice. And so this one was probably my fastest car I've done. I got this done, well, I'm still have to coat it, but you know, two days. Full paint correction, um, that's consi consisting of just a not, you know, it's, but it wasn't bad, it's fairly new. So, you know, you're just, you know, going all over the finer edges and stuff and doing the edge work that was missed during the body shop. They're not detailers, they're, they, they paint and they color sand and they polish, that's it. That's my, my work is getting all around the edges, perfecting the edges, perfecting all the stuff that was left behind and really making and focusing on refining and making it smooth and level on a very safe side, on a very safe scale. So we do go pretty crazy on these cars as far as like doing edge work and whatnot. I don't go as far as, far as like removing 99% of the defects because that's unrealistic for one on a car like this it's custom and two you want to make sure if it's not going to get PPF paint protection film or really 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 heavy coating um, you know going to car shows and it's gonna have a busy lifestyle uh, being wiped down you know you want to make sure you have enough paint and clear coat and, and, and material on there that you have future polish jobs so you can refine the paint let's say two, three, four years down the line. So if you chop it all up, there's no point. Um, and you know, you just gotta be very smart when you work on these cars. And you, my biggest thing when it comes to detailing is, you know, don't become a hero. And, you know, take these things down to where, you know, where you think it's gonna be like extremely perfect. It's, it's never gonna happen. Uh, you can only do so much with these cars. Because if you burn the paint, what are you gonna do? You can sell the client. You know, you try to remove a scratch too much and you know, it's just, yeah. You wanna make sure you go home and you uh, don't have any nightmares at night because you messed up a car, burnt an edge and it's gotta go into paint. You know, you wanna make sure you preserve the car and the paint and not damage it. All right, so the truck just got here for, to pick up the, the beast and beauty over there. Uh, they're going to Tampa and then Miami. This one's going to Tampa, the other one's going to Miami. So we're about to load them up. It's been a long time coming for both of these cars. Very, very excited to be able to deliver two. And they both happen to be in Florida. 
not too far away from each other. So uh, we're gonna load them up, off we go, and see you guys in Tampa. What's going on? Hi, Mr. Byron. How are you today? I'm good. We're on our way to my car camper. Mm -hmm. See all the fancy cars and the pretty people. I'm just waiting on the plane to come. Good morning to you too. About to kick back and play some dominoes while I'm waiting. Oh yeah? Have a good time. Why you get stop at TSA, man? I had them all the way from large size, you see it. It's too big. Back in Florida, <laughs> Tampa. Uh, so far, I'm not impressed. But we haven't left the airport yet, so all right, see how it goes. So, what we're we here to do? Uh, we're here to drop off the fastest, craziest, wildest doling you've ever done. V8 compressor with a stick shift. Uh, bad out of hell. It is amazing. It's amazing. Not for the faint of heart. Still on the phone. We got we got Richard over here supporting us. You know, it's a beautiful thing. Come to enjoy the sunshine. I'm waiting to see this fast car go down the uh, waterway. I guess in Florida. Hope it don't get wet. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Long time coming. Long time coming. Uh, let's see what what Tampa has to offer. This is my first it's time a, it's here. It's a speedster with a with a gull wing roof that's removable. Amazing, amazing. This guy right here, amazing, amazing work. Tampa, Tampa was so much fun. Was such a beautiful place. Uh, this is us. Just got to the Tampa. Just got our suburban. We were, uh, you know. Blessed to have our friend Richard with us this trip. Uh, he came, he had a good time. Um, we ended up getting a B&B, &B, a really nice neighborhood. Met the truck, the truck actually, uh, trucker made it just on time. He was supposed to be there Saturday afternoon and he showed up Saturday afternoon. So as soon as we got there, the cars got there. Uh, it took him like two days to, uh, to get from LA to, uh, to Tampa, which is pretty amazing. But they made it, we, we met him there, we pulled the cars out.
downstairs. <laughs> Peep that one. <laughs> Grand, grand <laughs> opening here. Right? Oh my God! <laughs> the pictures came in. That's the same color. Oh my God! I love that. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. 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 I've been stretching to try to practice. This guy did amazing. Cool. Yeah, I think, I think that's a good fight. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you close it up and start it. Stretch. Much easier though. Can you imagine if the top was like the way it was? Mm -hmm. It's so impossible. Yeah, that was nothing. Not so bad. That was nothing. And you started to get eyes. You can move it back. Yeah, they're going to be looking at you tonight. Yeah, this goes up. I don't know, Kim. You know, the I know. can go back. You know what I said? I can follow him back. Yeah. Oh, no. There's no way. Keep an eye on him, Kim. Keep an eye on him. <laughs> they're going to be looking at you. About to catch a dolphin. We're going dolphin hunting in the Tampa Bay. You guys think I'm joking? Why should we catch a fucking dolphin? What are they, they doing, the Pine? They're, they're fucking fishing this shit. They lost I'm, their I'm mind. I'm about to go take a leak in the fucking ocean. Oh, oh God. God. It's too dark. I can't see your face. Hey, hey, you guys are scaring the fish. <laughs> You're scaring the fish. You gotta what? walk easy. Fuck this. There's no fish here. You're a fish. Casey, say something. You're a fish, John. What is this called? Oh, look, 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 look at the little wee wee. <laughs> Big old bottle. Yeah, look at John. <laughs> oh. I can see your face you now. Fish? Say something. Did you hear the fish? Uh, what are we doing? We're sitting on the dock of the bay, waiting on the fish to come in in Tampa Bay. Dolphins. How about that? Dolphins. Oh, we're looking for a dolphin. We're looking for a big fish like myself. Why are you picking your ass? Dude? Well, we're looking for... Right, you know, hey, hold up. Strip. Pick up the, the weight. Turn, Put the... Turn, turn, turn. Pick up the turn, weight? Yeah. Can you believe this shit? Are we like... Uh... <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> Can you <laughs> believe <laughs> this shit? We actually caught this a was fish. A, you just threw it in. We are fishermen. Not only are we car builders, we are fishermen. <laughs> <sighs> what other way can we end a good Sunday evening? What are you waiting for? 
bottle of uh, oh, you wrap this shit around it. VSOP and a fish. back from florida tampa we had a good time this is rich car cereal coming live and at you from s club la slang 500 we had a blast uh me john ed pyron uh mo casey the shop manager it was a hell of a time we delivered two cars to two clients one in Tampa was ecstatic. I had the best shower of my 20 years. It was wonderful. The water was piping hot. Shout out to the Airbnb that we were at. I had the best time. We even caught some fish. Fish, they look good. It was late. We were a little drunk. was nothing to do. But hey, the fishing took the time away before we got to the strip club. When we got to the strip club, it was on and cracking. I didn't know Florida one was that pretty. The breast was a little small, but hey, you can't have everything you want. But when we came there, we got. But anyway, moving on to the next thing. Can't wait. Then I see Triple G the boxer. We delivered his car up at Boca Raton. Got there kind of late, but we got it done. We got back kind of early because it was 6 o'clock, but we had to run. But we had a good time. It was great. And not only that, I want to shout out to the meat market, dining and restaurant. The steak was exquisite. The shrimps were great. The waiter was great. He didn't want to give me the tip of what strip club to go to, but uh, we'll talk about that later on. Anyway, the only place we missed was Miami. We had to fly back, but we did enough shopping for a year. And our next trip, which is coming up within the next 30 days, I gotta hurry up and get my passport. We're going to Dubai. We got five cars going. We making a statement. And hey, come back to the channel because we're gonna come back with the loot and we might have something special to give away. For now, I'm out. Check out YouTube, Slang 500, S Club LA. It's going down. Peace.